What's good, everybody? Welcome back to A1 Forever Sports, the show that's cool and fly too. Be generational because it's always time to be in. Don't you settle for less because you can always have more with the vision. And with that in Man. mind, we have a special topic going on today. And I have a few friends, a few buddies you guys may know. My man, Smooth Smitty from Smooth Smitty 10K. Let me say his name correctly. About to be 11K, <laughs> you dig. Join us from the, from the sports machine. And we also got T. Will uh, or Terry. Some of you might know him as Terry, and he's from One Time for the Fan. We all here about to have a nice little topic, man. Straight choosing your GM uh, for the day, man. What's up? Tell the people what's up, man. Smitty, T. Will, how y'all doing? Doing well. Doing well. Smitty, how about you? Hey, man, I'm hanging in there. Y'all know what I'm doing. I'm always trying to come up on a new idea on the video because – I like giving the fans what they want, man, because y'all know how I do it. Y'all know Amen. how I do that. Amen. That's what it's about, man. So, what it is, man, is this is which Atlanta GM problems would you rather have? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off a few things that each GM is experiencing, and we're going to discuss it and see which GM has the worst problem, the best problem, and so, so forth and so have you. So, I would like to start with our lovely illustrious atlanta atlanta braves and gm alex anthopolis so the braves right now currently are in the wild card position their best ace spencer strider done for the year you also lost your mvp and ronald acuna jr done for the year some of your top guys like sean murphy austin riley they have missed time. Sean Murphy possibly about to miss more time. We'll see what happens with that. Yep. Guys who contribute like Tyler Matzik, A.J. Smith Sharver on the IL. The Braves bats have not been booming consistently. And also, you also have Philadelphia currently running away with the division. Now, if you want to look on the Major League side, Baseball, you got to get that right. You got to get that right. They running away with Major League Baseball right now. Hey, hey, hey. We'll, we'll give them their respect, I guess, man. They're running away with Major League Baseball. But in the Braves' defense, Chris Sale has been a pleasant surprise. Um, before his recent outing, he was at 2.2, uh, 2.12 ERA, but now he's at a 3.06. But he still has 82 strikeouts. Renardo Lopez also has been a pleasant surprise. He has 55 strikeouts, ERA. 1.73 and max maximus freed who has been straight lights out his past five starts honestly um he is at two two point nine three era with 67 strikeouts combined these guys are like 18 and five and have been carrying the atlanta braves also you have, yes, have. pleasant surprises from marcelo zuna and jared kelnick who also mm -hmm. may be dealing with the injury so that's another problem for mm -hmm. double A. In the double A's defense, he has delivered the most recent world championship to the city of Atlanta. He's locked up the core. And some people say we need hitting. Some people say we need pitching. But right now, the Braves are keeping everything internal. And that right there for right now is uh, Braves GM Alex Anthopoulos. Now, gentlemen, how does that sound to you guys? Ooh, that sounds like a whole lot. Uh, a lot to take in. But indeed, I got indeed. confidence lot to in double A because we was in we was in the same situation three years ago. We won a uh, championship. Uh, what he right. did, he went out and found Jock Peterson. Uh, he went out and found uh, Rosario. Yeah. Uh, he went out and found yeah. uh, Smith, uh, Smith, the pitcher. So we've been in this situation with him before. The deadline is not here yet. So – Depending on what we do at the trade deadline, um, that's going to tell us how the rest of our season going to line up. Uh, if Sean Murphy can even come in the second half of the season and make the playoff stretch, I think that helps a lot. But, you know, I'm fine with Travis Darno because for some reason, late in the Darnold. season, he turns it on somehow. And during the playoffs, he's that guy. So I think, you know, I, the, the jury's still out on the Braves. Uh, so I don't think they're nowhere near in the worst situation simply because we have a long way to go. And 
we have a, a, a GM that can get the job done as far as uh, moving pieces around and getting the right pieces to fill in because we do need bats. We do need pitching. But you just can't single out either one of those because both of those are down right now. Because one week we are scoring six, seven runs and winning. Next week we're losing by five, six runs. So yeah. once we get consistent with the hitting, once we get the lineup in place that we need to um, put runs on the board and to be stable at hitting and timely hitting, uh, we'll be fine with the Braves. Uh, but if it's not a GM not that I don't trust, it's as Alex Anthopoulos. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also, man, the Braves, uh, as far as their run scoring, hasn't been tip-top like we can say last year in anything. Um, but sometimes, you know, We'll score three runs and win. Sometimes we'll score three runs and lose. It's just, it's just a seesaw right. battle, right. man. It's just a seesaw battle right now. Terry, and what you, you know, think about like pitching anyway? Pitching is right. always up and down, so that could happen. Right. But go T. Ahead. Will, what you think about the Braves, Alex Anthopoulos, and his GM problems? Well, you know, to your point. Uh, or Smitty's point, the Braves did win it in 2021. Alex is an excellent GM, um, but he's he's got some challenges, right? He's got some challenges, and and I, it, there's a lot going on with the Braves. So you know what no one is talking about, and and what I do think is having an impact on this team, and it, it's not necessarily a negative thing. It's just something that happens. Um, Washington, our third base coach is not there Mm -hmm. and whether or not you guys believe it that is a huge void if you've ever heard uh washington who's now coaching uh the angels if you've ever been in it it, his personality is infectious it is you may as well call ozzy albies his adopted son right ronald acuna (laughs) all the players love him and i think a big part of their their success was him keeping them loose Right. And that Mm -hmm. is gone in that locker room. And you can't just you can't fake that. It has to be organic. Right. The year that they won the World Series, I remember Ozzy saying, you know, Wash and they called him Wash. Wash told us something. And he said, look, guys, when we get it going, it's going to be asses and elbows. Y'all remember that? Asses and elbows. They they made a whole thing. They they made a whole thing about it. It was kind of like a rallying cry. You don't have that. The crazy, I don't want to say the crazy guy, but the animated guy, I can't think of his name. He, he he was a decent outfielder, didn't hit much, but he was always doing crazy stuff with the swords and keeping everybody loose. You guys know what I'm talking about. We don't we don't have that, right? So so the the thing about the Braves is they've been successful. This version has been loose. Mm. You know, they've been loose and they're In in my opinion, offensively, they're playing a little tight. Now, our pitching has been great. Our pitching is the very reason we sit at 10 or 9 games above 500 or wherever we are. But I do believe for the stretch half, we will need to acquire some pitching. But we definitely need an outfielder. Uh, Kelnick may be injured now. Acuna's out. And no disrespect to Adam Duvall, but he's 35, right? This ain't, you know. Adam Duvall from four or five yeah, years ago. He's getting, up, yeah. he's getting up there. So we're we're gonna we're gonna need some help. But with that being said, you know, this is Alex Anthopoulos. Right. And the thing about Alex is he makes moves that nobody sees, right? So he'll, you know, in 21, right. he went and got four outfielders, right? And hodgepodge right. Yeah. it together. That thing worked out. So I, I think it's definitely thing. a challenge. Yeah, go go ahead, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Course. No, I'll just say it's definitely a, no. I mean, um, just to your point, it's definitely a challenge. The Braves are thirty-four and twenty-five currently, mm-hmm. eight games behind the Phillies, mm-hmm. and um, the closest team to the Braves right now they have to worry about is the Washington Nationals, who are twenty-seven mm-hmm. and uh, thirty-four. But so you know, right now the Braves have like a little cushion, and just to your point, the pitching has kept uh, kept us in it. Just like mm-hmm. I was reading off some of those numbers earlier. Uh, our pitching has definitely been leading the charge because our bats mm-hmm. haven't been um, up to par, so, so to say, that we're, we're used to. Marcelo right. Ozuna, he's been the best brave overall. I can say with about 17 homers, uh, over 50 RBIs. So, mm-hmm. like, he's, like, been the best brave, or, or maybe you can say the most consistent brave right now is for when it comes to – No, you're to right. Him. He's 
you're no, no, no. You said it right the first time. He's been the best. Like he's yeah. on an MVP yeah. path. But go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead, sir. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. You, you had it right the first time. Go ahead. Yeah, he's right <laughs> yeah, man. Just uh, two years ago, we were talking about throwing him out to the wolves. So throwing him out to the wolves. Isn't that crazy, right? So yeah. crazy how it turns around. I'm gonna be honest with you too, guys. Um, we have to factor in the personal things that was going on in his life too. You see, you, we seen mm-hmm. him on the news just like everyone else did. Yeah. Him and yeah. his um right. his wife at the time, I believe, and you know stuff like that. When no matter if it's a male or a female, when they're going through different things like that, they may not be at the top of their game. So that also right. factors in in my mental because I'm thinking about that. What's going to happen? They could possibly, you know, what I'm saying, end my career this way, you know. Yep. So and all that, when you think about it, ever since all that went away and everything like that, his game did start to pick up little by little. And now yes, Marcel is. has just been lights out pretty much. And he's like somebody that pitchers don't want to face. Um, he can really get it going. And sure. he has jump started some of the things, some of the rallies, some of the uh, the runs for the Braves and everything in a good yes, way. Yes. Um, so yes. you just can't take away from that. Um, uh, honestly, normally in June, which it is now, the Braves normally start hitting the cover off the ball. So we're hoping that, you know, so that yeah. trend kind of, just you know, saying continues for the Atlanta Braves because we definitely need it. Uh, we want to gain some ground right now. We are 10 games pretty much behind, uh, well, 10 wins pretty much behind, um, these Phillies, man, who again, yeah. are but, we, but we up in the wild card though, right? We up in the wild yeah, card. Yeah, though, we're up right? in the wild yeah. card. We're up mm-hmm. in the wild card. Okay, um, so, yeah. mm-hmm. All we got to do is get in. Right, right. Yeah. Right now, That's the true. Phillies have the best record in ba- uh, in the NL. They have the best record uh, there at 44-19. Then you have the Dodgers at 38-25. and 25. Mm-hmm. Next, you have um, the Milwaukee Brewers, who are 36-26. and 26. Next, mm-hmm. you will be the yeah. Atlanta Braves at 34-25. and 25. And then the mm-hmm. next closest team to the Atlanta Braves would be the San Diego Padres, who are 32 and 33. Mm. Wow. And they're coming okay. back so strong because they started it. out bad. Yeah. Yeah. We, so, yeah. Let's yeah. keep an eye on. Yeah. We, yeah, we, man, we do have so a bit of a cushion. Yeah. I can tell you exactly one second. Okay. Uh, so, yes, the Braves right now are first in the NL wild card. With the Chicago Cubs 31 and 31, the San Diego Padres 32 and 33. Mm-hmm. So those are the two teams who are chasing the Atlanta Braves for the wild card right now. And of course, I've already read off the division leaders at, as in the Brewers, Dodgers, and Phillies. Right. But so, but man, yeah, he had. I want to mention also something too, also that Double A he had a farm system to work with as well, guys. Back then when we had to make those moves. And we don't have that same farm system. So to yeah. make significant moves similar to how he did back then to get all these players, to get different pitching and everything like that, we would have to give mm-hmm. up something. Because, you know, guys' contracts have kicked in by then since, you know, he's locked us up or locked up mm-hmm. the young core. These mm-hmm. guys are starting to get right. paid. Those contracts are starting to kick in. So things are going to be a little different than how they was, say, back in 21. I know mm-hmm. it, I know it's recent, but but time has passed, and you know kind of, the mm-hmm. ink has dried on a lot of contracts. So you're mm-hmm. paying guys now; it's different. Mm-hmm. So we have to take that into accountability. But unpopular opinion, I'm gonna say this: I think the Braves are doing exactly what they need to do. I think mm-hmm. the Braves are keeping it Just internal, trying to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, you have to. You have guys on your roster. You have to see what you can get from them. So I mm-hmm. think it's a good move to work internal, see what you have mm-hmm. around in the mm-hmm. locker room, around in the farm system first. And then if you need to make a significant move, you go do it. But you wait until mm-hmm. around the trade deadline. So mm-hmm. that's an unpopular opinion. But I think the Braves are doing right by waiting until at least the trade deadline to see where you are and uh, mm-hmm. see if you need to make a move uh, for the second half of the season, which you most likely may have to because it's guys mm-hmm. that's nipping at your heels right now. Mm-hmm. I agree with you 100 percent, Chris. I, I I agree with everything you said. Number one, you need to find out what you have. You you, mm-hmm. you you need to at this point. Right. We need to we need to see what's up with Forrest Wall. I don't know if they bring him up, but I'm for it because I personally think Kelnick, it, you know, may be on a 10 day um, uh, injured list or whatever. Yeah, Maybe not. Uh, but yeah. the Braves like the whole thing's 
you know, close to the vest, but I'd, I'd like to see him. Forrest Wall can fly, absolute stud, doesn't really have much power in the Braves like that. But to your point, we do need to see what we have before we venture out. And a lot of something else that nobody's talking about is the fact that, you know, Bally Sports, their bankruptcy kicked in. And so when you talk about trading, you're talking about sometimes taking on salaries. But if you can't look to that revenue, because from my understanding, Valley Sports isn't a, and I know in some areas they're not paying these teams. So mm -hmm. what that means is to kind of give you context, let's say that your contract, uh, the Dodgers get $300 million. I, I hate the Dodgers because they're just so <laughs> filthy rich. But I do. I, I, sure. I, I, I hate them. They're but, doing free flowing money. That's you know, it. 300 million, they're bathing in money. Jeez. But, you know, they're not. So now I don't think the Dodgers have a contract with Bally, but I think the Braves contract right now is like maybe 60, 70 million. They're not going to get that this year. Now, thank God for the uh, setup that they have down there and all the hotels. Well, you know, the Major League and, and Baseball uh, trying to carry some of it because. Some of uh, it. Even Some when, of it, yeah. Even when they ain't, even when they ain't on uh, Bally, you are gonna find on MLB Network still. So they right. carry it. Right. But the revenue from them is what I'm saying. They're not getting the revenue. You get what I'm right. saying? So, mm -hmm. and I yeah. bring it up because now you're gonna have some GMs that are like, okay, well, I want to trade with this guy, but we literally can't take on that income because we were depending on this, and it's not there. So to uh, Chris's right. point. You and in the case of the Braves who are with Bally, you very much need to know what you have. Now, not to say the Braves don't have money because with the battery and all the income they have, yeah. they're, 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 they're printing be money for, the next, for, for quite some time with that battery yeah. alone. You can go, yes. you can go to the battery when there's no, when, when and not even go to the game and have a great time, correct? Correct, correct, yep. but doesn't it? But still. <laughs> You're not getting that revenue from Bally. So I bring that up to say the Braves may be more hesitant to go out and trade for someone because you don't have that. Not that they will. And not only that, the Braves are number three as far as – a lot of people don't realize Braves are paying out a lot of money, right? I think you got I'm the Phillies, the, Phillies the Dodgers, and you were, right? And so what our audience – you know, what what and I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but – Baseball doesn't have a salary cap, but they kind of do. So yeah, you, it's, it's it's it's, in, it's right. almost like a, it's almost like the the uh, the yardage uh, the yardage gain line in the NFL. It's always like right. it's almost invisible. You can just go right through it. Well, you can, but you, right. you pay you pay taxes on it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the Braves are already over the second threshold. So right. you bring on certain salaries. Now you're on the third threshold, which means you might get taxed if you do it the next year at 50 percent on everything that you're over yeah so if you're over by 10 million for the contract down there. there you go there yeah. you go that that's that's yeah. where i'm going that's so the, they the they right so so that i i bring that up to say that it's it, it to your point chris it's not as simple as it was in 21 mm -hmm. it's not now again if anybody can figure it out it's alex Yes, but yeah. it, it, he's it, earned it, the benefit of the something. doubt too. I yes, think. he has. You know? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. But yes, sir. Go ahead. Back yeah, to you, man. Man. Well, man, I'm a I'm a switch gears, man, and I'm gonna go to our next GM. I'm gonna go to our next GM, and that is Atlanta Falcons GM Terry. Oh, scary Let's Terry. Go. Terry Let's F baby, go. Terry MF baby, whatever y'all want to call him. Ah, MF baby. Terry ah. Fotno. <laughs> Terry Fotno. Now, Terry Fotno, since he's been the GM of the Atlanta Falcons, cleaned up the salary cap. Let's start there. Um, yes, three did. straight seven yeah. and ten seasons with a guy that he did not hire. You know, mm -hmm. um, new coach. Even though they new told him that claim he was. He was a part of the hiring process, but we know that was a lie. Yeah, we on, know. Uh, yeah, he he didn't hire mm -hmm. Arthur Smith at all. So three seven, three straight seven and ten seasons with a coach he did not hire. Um, new a new coach now. Two new quarterbacks. One of them worth a hundred million dollars and coming off an Achilles surgery. Mm -hmm. um, roughly eighty percent of the team, more or less, it will be returning. 
Also, uh, multiple primetime games with a tougher schedule than people want to admit. Mm -hmm. Um, Criticism and added pressure from the media to succeed, especially Mm -hmm. with these primetime games. That's another reason why we got them, y'all. Y'all know that. And when the South make the playoffs this season, you cannot afford another losing season, especially in a row. Correct. That is our GM, Terry Fontenot. And it's and and honestly, you really could keep going. And I know we're going to end up touching on it as we're about to start talking about it now. But those are some tough things, man. Like whether people mm. know it or not, you know, all the talk and all the yeah. outside chatter. Like it's easy to say, yeah, but- oh yeah, we just don't ignore those things. We just ignore those things. But come on, man, we all human, dog. Yeah. And at the end of the yeah, day, but you got you know it's pressure. He was it's it's pressure. He was, go ahead, man. He was behind the eight ball. It's tough being a GM because he was behind the eight ball at the start. And mm-hmm. the most people when they're in his position they have to dig a team out of cap hill. By the time they get halfway to doing that, and guess what? They don't lost their job. And they don't get very true. But very true. one good right. thing that helped him survive uh was Arthur Blank uh the owner starting to see his vision. Uh mm-hmm. because he even though three straight seven ten seasons, he gave him this season to prove himself. And what does he do? He goes out and probably gets a guy he would probably would have hired from the jump who should have stayed in Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. Went out and got a guy that uh, that he actually knows and trusts. And uh, I'm pretty sure they've been talking about this for a couple of years now. And Raheem Morris even said it. Once I get another chance to be a head coach, I pretty much got my staff in order because I've been nitpicking here and there and we've had conversation over the years. So when – they hired the staff. They they're really already in tune, and you can tell it because mm-hmm. I never saw Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot in the same place at the same time for long. Even though they did press conferences oh, together, they just did not look com- comfortable around each other, and mm-hmm. that's not the case with Raheem Morris and uh, Terry Fontenot. So mm-hmm. it's all yeah. about being like comfortable as being like a GM. Him. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's about being comfortable as a GM. When you can be comfortable, and that's Raheem Moore talks about all the time, when you can be transparent with each other, that goes a long way. So they're transparent with each other. They're building this team together mm-hmm. and not with Rich McKay and Arthur Blank in it. So I think it's going to make a big difference. Uh, so right. Terry um, finally has leveled the playing field, and now I think we're going to see these things pay off, knowing that we don't have to worry about Cap Hill anymore. Uh, even though we have one, I think one point one million and five six million with the per fifty one uh, rule, um, I still think a couple of cuts are coming, and I still think he'll have room to make even more moves uh, before mm-hmm. the season right. starts. So uh, he he's not the guy I trust. Salary. If I right, if it, if it's somebody that I trust, it's as Anthopolis and Terry Fontenot. Uh, mm-hmm. Another Atlanta Hawks. That's another story, but we're gonna get into that. Well, we're gonna get into that. We're going we're gonna to talk or touch on that in a minute. But, yeah, to, to your point real quick, Smitty, okay, mm-hmm. I want to talk about a game in particular. I, if I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me correctly on the particular game, I want to say it was the Texans and the Falcons game last year. So um, Terry Fontenot on the field, Arthur Smith on the field. Um, the gap between those two was just massive, honestly. And we're talking about mm-hmm. pregame. We're not talking about during the game. We're talking about just mm-hmm. pregame. I never mm-hmm. necessarily just seen, and I could have missed it, but I've never necessarily seen those two even embrace on the field, you know? Mm-hmm. And then exactly. um, so, exactly. <laughs> you never even seen them embrace on the field. And I guarantee you, you will see Terry Fontenot and Raheem Morris embracing on the field this season. I bet you see mm-hmm. that. Because you mm-hmm. already see the kind of chemistry that the two have right now. Those two act like they're brothers. Like, hey, we finally got this opportunity, yo. This is supposed to have really happened before now, but we're here now. So let's make the best of it. And you can tell that, like Smitty just said, they're in tune. It's just like they're in tune. It's almost just like kind of like Smitty, honestly, I like me, you, and Birdo, how we all met up different mm-hmm. walks of life and everything, but we mm-hmm. come together and we mesh just so quickly. You know, mm-hmm. and in a year's time, you just see what we've already been able to do 
not trying to you know like big us up yeah. like that but i'm yeah. just saying as far as the chemistry and the camaraderie that's built with guys who you know haven't known each other forever like that so mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's a great thing it's a great problem to have i enjoy the infectious talking about what terry was saying earlier about an infectious energy about uh, mr washington that's what raheem morris has he makes you mm -hmm. want to be around him when he walks in he commands the room straight up you know so with his personality with his knowledge and just his uh his uh sincerity so mm -hmm. uh yeah i definitely uh trust terry fontenot to do what he needs to do he has a few uh questionable moves to the outsiders but of course on the inside we already know kurt's not kurt is a kurt i don't want to call him a band-aid but he's a short-term solution let's say that and they went out and got somebody that could possibly learn to learn yes he's what, he's, what they call a bridge yeah 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 he's, he's bridge, a bridge. but he's a bridge. yeah and we gotta cross it. right 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 and we're gonna cross that bridge you know but at the end of the day, dog, he made the best decision. And we had to have something for the future because what? We've already seen that movie before. Right, Smitty? Right, Terry? We've seen that movie before. Oh, yeah. What happened after that Ryan left? We don't want to see that movie again. That was a terrible movie. No, I we don't. Uh, that movie, though, over. Yeah. Hey, man, it was terrifying. Um, Chris, I'm gonna. It, it's funny you say that because I was literally just thinking it. Um, having worked with you guys, um, you know, just the, the, the little time I've worked with you guys. And when I say you guys, you guys have a respect for each other, but there's a chemistry there. I and forgive me for saying this, but I'm gonna say it, there's a love there. You can you 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 can feel the chemistry, you can feel the respect, you can feel the love, and you guys work well together and on any winning organization. For the most part, you have to have that. You have to yeah, have that. Yeah. You For said something. Part. You were like, you know, I, I saw, I never saw Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith. It's because it wasn't there and it has to be organic. It's nothing you can fake. It's either there yeah. or it's not. It's obvious you guys right. at the core fundamentally believe in, in certain belief systems. And I think you could say the same for Raheem and Terry Fontenot. They just want to get it done. They want to win. They're both humble. The one thing I will say about, and I've worked with you guys long enough to know this, you are all humble. You guys have oh, yeah. 11,000 subscribers to talk to you. You would never know it. You would never know it. I've never seen you big league anybody. I've never I've never seen you look down on anybody. And I've had one. Well, see, I've had a lot of one on one conversations right. with Chris. Go ahead. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Terry, because yeah. um, I just got to say this. Um, and the reason why our chemistry is the way it is. We talk every each and every single day like yeah. we brothers. And yes, when you uh can still and one thing about Birdo, me and Chris, if one of us um off balance and one of us going sideways doing something that the other two don't like, we gonna say something. Right. We just not gonna let it right. carry on. If you got something to straighten, straighten it in and there. And right. um we respect each other's opinion, and that's what it's about at right. the end of the day. Respect yes. each other, and yeah, I don't think Arthur Smith respected anybody but his ego. I mean, you could tell. That, I mean, you know, that, that honestly, Arthur Smith in those press conferences, like that's what uh the 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 um I can say what the new school women would call all the sass and everything like that. You could just see it. it was, <laughs> oh wow! Oh, yeah, wow. man, it, 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 it oh, was cruising off of homes, dog. Oh, that rich man. kid compliment. Oh, man. Oh, you could tell wow. he was he wasn't connected, mm. dog. He was out there. Mm. Yeah, yeah oh, so I'm just oh, saying, dog. Oh, I'm just saying, dog. Like I'm just oh, saying, who moves goodness. like that, brother? Oh, who moves goodness. like that? Oh, oh my man. goodness. I'm going to cut, cut Chris out right there, man. Go ahead, Tier. I'm going <laughs> to cut Chris out right there. He's he going to start acting a fool, but I already I'm, know. Go ahead, Tier. I'm about to throw a flag, man. Unnecessary roughness on Chris. 15 yeah. yard penalty. You you show it out. No. All right, I'll take that penalty. I'll take that penalty. You, you said I'll take that penalty. Okay. All right. No, it it, it all serious, wow. though. Um, you know, you can't have love without correction, and you can't have correction without love. And it, it, it's clearly okay. that you you men, you young men, are walking together in a similar purpose. And you have to have that. And I could draw that same analogy or comparison to Terry Fontenot and Raheem. 
Um, right. So I'm excited about that. I, I, I first and foremost, I think, I think this team is going to accomplish a lot. And to be honest with you, I see the same thing in Kirk. And the reason I say that is because if you look at his last team, they gave him a bunch of chains and they made a caricature out of him called Kirk O Chains. Guys, that's a tremendous sign of yeah. respect. And understand, well, yeah. you're you're talking about young men that are couldn't be more diametrically opposed. Kirk Cousins, <laughs> right, who's rich now, basically, you know, suburb dad. And some of these guys, their lifestyles are totally different, but they found common ground. They like Kirk. They respect Kirk. And I believe that he has probably some of the qualities that Terry Fontenot and Raheem have. And that may be another reason they signed him. The more I look at this team and how it's cultivated, I think the Falcons are very smart. Two reasons. One, you got this penalty coming down in a couple of days. And I don't know about you yeah. guys, but I feel like it's yeah. going to be a minimum oh, of a second yeah. round draft pick because the NFL was embarrassed. The NFL was embarrassed. It, it's like, you know, when your mom, you, you, my mom just passed, so forgive me. I'm, I'm, I've been drawing a lot of analogies lately, but if I showed out in front of hey, company, that's cool. Oh, I got it much worse. Now, if you right. did something, it's oh, just yeah. mom around, yeah. that's one thing. You show out in front of company, excuse me for saying this, you got that ass whooped. Okay. Oh, and I hey, yeah, uh, we grew up. Hey, I'm not I'm not that much younger than you, trust me. <laughs> they would hold that they will hold that they will hold that arm up in the air and pour you around oh, yeah. and tell you it's hey, it, it's on. It's on. It you you gonna get it. You know what Wait, I mean? You, and my mama, hey, my mama was funny because if she missed a syllable, she'd go back. Don't you oh you move, don't you do like she was she was gonna get you, right? I think that's what the NFL is gonna do yeah, to the Falcons. Yeah. I think they're going to I think they're going to take at least a second round draft pick and some money. And I think because of that, during the draft, the Falcons took a look at that and said, number one, we're not going to be at this position again because we're going to win. But number two, we might not even have a first round pick. We might not have a second round pick. Let's go ahead and get Penix now. And when you look at it through those lens, it makes perfect sense. Uh, is there pressure on the Falcons? Most definitely. Most right. definitely, because the media is still stirring the narrative because that's what they like to do. Let's be real. Y'all are content right. creators. You got to have something right. to talk about. OK, they're that's stirring the narrative. Oh, the Falcons, the Falcons. So there's pressure there. Right. But Don't I don't forget about anybody... how there is no training camp this year. Just conveniently. Absolutely. Yeah. They got to finish I'm construction. Chris, get out gotta of my head, man. Construction. <laughs> well, get out of my head. Get out. I ain't gonna say nothing, but get out of my head, man. Because I, yeah, I'm not gonna say it, but you can say it. But I'm not gonna say it, but I'm gonna think it. You absolutely, it's isn't that funny? And that's that. Yeah. Okay. I'm just anyway, saying, man. No, um, because it'll be flooded, bro. Like me and Smitty, we've already had this conversation. It'll mm -hmm. be flooded. Turner Kent would be flooded. ESPN. Uh, CBS, everybody. Fox everybody. 5, Channel 2, they gonna, everybody wants to get a look at Michael Penix. Everybody right. wants to get a look at Kirk Cousins, the new offense. Yep. It would be yep. an absolute circus to the point to where it may not even be about football anymore. Yes. Coach Raheem Morris oh, is yeah. not going to no, take off his new tender. His new tender as head coach, his second time around, he is not going to kick it off being a media circus. Absolutely not. Agreed. I don't mean to correct you, Chris, but it's uh it's tenure, not tender. Because if it's tender, you gonna start <laughs> oh, 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 you know, oh, oh, I figured I should have known oh, you would have called. Oh, I should have known. Oh, uh, <laughs> hold on, oh, he said, hold oh, on, oh, tender. No, nah, no, nah, he ain't talking about no chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh man. Okay. Oh, man, hey, no hey, call hey, it. I mean. Saying? Hey, that, that that that's how we keep it going, Terry. We just love to laugh, right, man? Hey, that's what nothing we wrong with that. Hey, maybe he was talking about NFL tender, in, in which case, you know, I know. I, got, I, I, got some, I got. I shouldn't have said. That. I got some honey mustard sauce down in the refrigerator, so now he don't. Yeah, make me hungry. yeah. At, at my bad. <laughs> See, that's my fault. That's Mama's fault, and not getting the uh, my enunciations out all the way. You know, so just being excited. You know, talking about these sports and. Uh, I, I I slipped that time, and yeah, now I probably got some mini homework. 
Nah, okay. yep, yep. Now I got Smitty hungry. Yeah, <laughs> it's hey, Fellas, it's, but, it's okay. Hey, that's that's that's, right. that's 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 one. But we have one more gym, y'all, before we get up out of here, man. Got one oh more man, gym. this is gonna be a good one. I'm, I'm finna go ham like a Subway sandwich. Landry mm. freaking <laughs> feels, man. Landry yeah. feels. Yeah, now the Hawks, the they haven't. They haven't been uh, past the uh, first round, really, since uh, the 2021 season. You know, mm -hmm. with Trey Young Facts. and New York Knicks hating them. Game 7, uh, Kayvon Herter against, you know, the Sixers. The uh, Eastern Conference Finals run. Still trying to figure out why that referee was standing there. But that's neither here or there anymore, you know. We um we already know what happened. We lost to the Bucks, and then the Bucks would go on to win the NBA championship. Okay. $24 million exception that expires soon. Uh, also, you have an assistant from Golden State here to help manage the cap. Mm, that doesn't make you feel too good that you have to go and hire another guy to help the GM. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, who do you keep? Who needs to go? So many questions going around with the roster, especially so around, uh, evolving around Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. And, of course, other pieces like Clint Capella, like DeAndre Hunter, and so forth and so on. And, of course, the Atlanta Hawks, they had a slim chance, but the Mother's Day shined on us. And we had the first round, awarded the first round pick in lottery history. Now, it wasn't in NBA history. It was in lottery history because the Atlanta Hawks have had the first round pick before when they had uh, the chance to sign David Thompson. Uh, way back in the 70s, but was unable to due to this. Yeah, yeah. But they was unable to sign him due to corruption in the organization, um, fines and fees that the organization had to pay. They just didn't have the money to pay him. And mm. he went on to right. be a Hall of Famer, all-star, et cetera, et cetera, with the Denver Nuggets. Uh, and you know, so the rest is history with that. But either way it goes, um, you made you made a, a organizational swing when you Traded three first round picks for DeJounte Murray. You know, yeah, uh, you did that. And now, right now, you don't have first round picks going forward after this year. And you mm. may need to make uh trades, you may need to make situations happen because you have a right now problem and you have a future problem mm -hmm. with the Atlanta Hawks right yeah. now. So mm -hmm. that is GM Landry Fields. And mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't a super long list, but boy, mm -hmm. when I say it was haymaker after haymaker, when you just think about yes, it, yes, it was. <laughs> Boom. 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 Now, I know I said on the first two GMs, I trust them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, boy. So give me, so give me some trust, me. man. Hey, he went, he, he could not get, he could not get an ounce of trust from me. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even pull one in a cup to try to get. <laughs> But Amen. I will say, um, <laughs> this is his chance to redeem himself. And what I mean by that, um, I think that this is his chance to put his stuff on this team. You have the number one pick. You have $25 million in cap exception. Uh, so you could go out and still get another another solid role pick to go along with the draft pick that you take. Um, you still can make a deal for the, the, the DJ or Trey, which I think both of them stay because they're – they sell tickets. Let's keep it real. Uh, get rid of Clint Capella for a second round pick. Uh, you have Jalen Justin to build around as well. So you mm -hmm. have pieces there to build a solid roster. Only thing you have to do, go get you a big band and go add a couple pieces to the bench. And we may not be having this conversation next year. So he has a chance to get it right and earn not only my trust, but the city of Atlanta's trust. Uh, because it's time. We saw what we had when we had Dominique. We, we talked about that a lot about 1994, but we're not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> let's not make that same mistake again. Let's not do let's it. Let's not make that same mistake again. Because if we do, guess what? Four or five years down the road, we're going to be having the same conversation again. Mm, so it's right. time to build a championship caliber roster in Atlanta. And to start to do that, you have your superstar in Trey Young. Uh, you have your rising young star in Jalen Johnson. So mm -hmm. why not now? Let's go get that third star. And as y'all know, this super teams are slowly fading away. So yeah. now it's about building a solid team. Like uh, Terry said earlier, it's about building a solid team, and that starts with chemistry on the court, in the locker room, and in the front office. So right. if they can get all of that in one, 
Oh yeah, Atlanta is going to have Atlanta yeah. going to light up some things because we talked about the I'm sorry the Falcons and the Braves who are to me championship worthy right now. Mm-hmm. If the Hawks make the right move oh, this all season, we could be saying that about them in the next year or two. So yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely then, not right now. You don't have yeah. my trust. Mm-mm. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely not right now. And and honestly, with the number one pick, regardless who we draft at number one, it still doesn't make you a championship team. I know me mm-hmm. and Terry we were talking right. about this before. It's going to right. be about the moves you make after the draft, which mm-hmm. may be more important than the actual draft pick. Because you may go mm-hmm. and get Alex R. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Now what? Because that's still mm-hmm. not a championship roster. And mm-hmm. God forbid that, just like I- I'll give him his credit, but I was thinking the same things. God forbid that we have to literally start SAR immediately out the gate. Because mm-hmm. this is not a Wimbanyama. We don't we don't know if he could be somewhere in that area, but mm-hmm. he's not that right now. We already know Wimbanyama came in with a different skill set that was already mm-hmm. ready. Things that mm-hmm. SAR is still working on. Mm-hmm. You know? So that's another thing, too. You still have to make the right moves. And it's on Landry to do this, man, because we have to be set up for now and in the future because we're not a championship winning team right now and we Mm -hmm. don't have time to continue to waste guys like trey young if we decide to keep him because i know he's been having some cryptic tweets going on and then Mm -hmm. also dejounte murray who also you know to have cryptic videos tweets and whatnot Mm -hmm. so we don't know what's going on with anything and maybe Mm -hmm. they both stay is what i feel like should happen just like i was saying back with bob on Monday, um, I think that, that they should stay together and, you know, stick it out because to look at organizations like Boston and look at what they have going on. I know it's two different type of players, but just them make the uh, building pieces around Tatum and Brown. That's what they did. Instead mm-hmm. of splitting up, yeah. they stuck with them. And <laughs> built around. Them. So that's mm-hmm. what Atlanta needs to do, because Atlanta like Trey or, or you don't like Trey, the Atlanta Hawks have not built around Trey Young co- co- uh, collectively or correctly. So mm-hmm. it's just yeah. the best uh, wing defender he's had it was De- is DeAndre Hunter, and take that for whatever you worth. Nobody's taking that seventy million dollar contract, so you better hope it's mm-hmm. not going to be a salary dump when it comes to DeAndre mm-hmm. Hunter. I don't see nobody mm-hmm. taking that for his production because mm-hmm. why would you? Well, the best thing to do with that, like you said from the jump, was make him a six man. That's, that's, that's it. it. With it. And that's a lot. That's a lot for a bro. six man. But sometimes, like I said earlier, like Terry says about chemistry, if that role fits him best. You just got an expensive ass bench player, and that's just what it's gonna be. Right. And honestly, like, like um, Terry, I want to know how much do you trust the front office? Um, <laughs> before I get my trust. <laughs> Oh wow! Well. I you know hey, Terry, I, I got I got a seat right behind me on the bus if you want to jump on. Oh, 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 oh. You know I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be nice. I, I'm trying to be nice, fellas. Um, and I got a breeze car. Uh, 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 yeah. We can go all around the city. Huh? Okay, okay. Uh, I you, you know to be honest, I, I'll say it like this: uh, Landry Fields is is a new GM. Mm-hmm. I would say he inherited a not so great situation. You know, number one, I I think the Hawks in some instances paid the wrong guys. Uh, Hunter, and Hunter is a great player when healthy, but he doesn't but seem to work. be healthy. He can't. But he I don't work on nothing. Right, he can't. He can't stay on the court. Right. So, in my in my humble opinion, and again, I watch the Hawks. My my knowledge and savvy of basketball is not what it is for baseball and football. But with that being said, I feel like Same here. I feel like we need a four, and maybe a, a, a Sar can either be the four or the five. But we need somebody that can score and defend, right? And if right. you're not going to start him this year, fine. We have to figure that out. Whether that's I don't know, beg somebody to take Hunter. I, I, nothing against Hunter, but he's not healthy enough to make a difference. He's just not. And and we've seen this. Somebody was saying, we've seen this film before. I've watched this film for the past three years. I'm ready to get off. You want to keep Trey? Fine. You you want to keep DeJounte? Fine. Because I think there are intangibles that DeJounte has that people are not aware of. I think DeJounte behind the scenes is a, I need to get in your ass. I, and you need that. Yeah. You need, you need the wild rod guy. 
you need a you need a good guy, but you also need a guy that's gonna keep it real and be like, "Hey, man, what's up?" You you have Trey, to have that. Trey, can and, we agree that Trey and DJ are day and night? Yes, can we agree to that yes, because can. like they yeah, they yeah, have yeah. the same birthday. They they're yep. born on the same day, but they're day and night as far as like vocalship and everything. Like yeah, Dejounte, you 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 you'll see it. You know what I'm saying? You know Trey, he gets fired up yeah, when he, he gets quiet. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 he's the quiet one. And like you mm -hmm. said, the quiet assassin. And then, you know, DeJounte's more of the rah-rah guy. But, you know, he backs yeah. it up most times. And also, DeJounte Murray, man, his steals, him being able to get into the lane yes. and take the ball away. Yes. I'm just saying yes. he's been able to have 100 steals in a season, back-to-back yes. -back seasons with the Atlanta Hawks. It's just it's yes. little things like what can they do? Like everybody's talking about Brandon Ingram. I'm like, is Brandon Ingram going to play both ways and have the energy to play both ways? Then who else are you going to go make moves to get? Because sometimes Ingram can be a liability as well. And we already mm -hmm. going to have Trey. Right. So yeah. what kind of conversation? But, but the thing about Brandon Ingram, the thing about bringing Brandon Ingram height works in his size. You talk about a guy mm -hmm. that can steal rebound. He can still pass. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah, like you said, he can definitely got to have that want to. He's, he's going to be the number two regardless. Mm -hmm. That's another right, thing right, too. Right. I don't. Does he want to be a number one? I don't. I, I mean, I, you can want whatever you want, but if you come to Atlanta, you got to already have in your mind that you're the number two. Mm, so yeah. that's that's another thing with any player got to got to think about coming to Atlanta. They're not the first option, and they possibly may not even be the second or third option. It all depends because you got yeah, Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson coming. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's what Let I'm me... saying. You can't. You got to get him the ball. So that's another mm -hmm. option that you have to think about, too. And if you're uh, Landry Fields, you have to think about these things. But when you're negotiating, trying to get trying to make moves, trying to get guys to come to Atlanta, you got to see what your sales pitch is going to be, because other guys on the outside already see what's going on. Other guys who are closer to the team and more and fine and more fine in tune than we are. Um, mm -hmm. That's closer to the team. They see what's going on. I mean, if you just open your eyes, you'll see the the the, the trials and tribulations that are ahead. For Landry Fields, and why I'll, he's going to be limited. He's he's going to be limited as to who he can get. And mm -hmm. to be honest, I think the only position that he can sell right now is the center position, because as I've been saying, you know, we hadn't had a dominant center in God knows how long. Yeah. So I, if you go out and get a big man that you think Rumble. can come in and help you see right away, that's going to be the only pitch that you can throw out there. Anything else going to get knocked over the fence. And of course, you know, unfortunately. Trey and Luca being connected to each other for all time now. Yeah, that's another yeah. thing. So it's not the thing about it is it's not just Trey and Luca. It's the Hawks and the Mavericks that are linked together. As right. long as these two players are active in the league, so you yeah, see what right. Dallas has done. Different things that mm -hmm. Atlanta has. First of all, Dallas has had consistency at the coaching staff since 2021 in hiring Jason Kidd. Mm -hmm. They've been to the mm -hmm. Western Conference Finals two times now with the two same. Times. Yeah. You know, and now mm -hmm. the final, they went, went and got Kyrie. They they tanked a little bit. They did, but uh, so they can get lively. You know, they took they took some hits behind that. But at the end of the day, it worked. I mean, I don't know what you can say. I mean, I don't know. Eddie Guerrero used to say lie, cheat, and steal, and I mean, it worked for him. So it just you know, <laughs> the crazy thing is about the crazy thing is about Jason Kidd that a lot of people don't know, and they don't think about. Um, he won the finals with the Mavericks in 2000. Yes, he did. And he he went to the finals in the early 2000 with the Knicks. So um, yes, he, twice. he has championship experience, right, twice. Mm -hmm. So uh, twice. Yeah, you got to throw that into uh, account, too. One of the best point guards to ever do it. And then the Mavericks continue to make moves. They made moves before the season, during the season, and are now in the finals. That's a, that's a salute to their front office. To sticking with it and making moves they saying we got to put the right guys around luca so it's not just trey versus luca it's the hawks versus the mavs as long as these two guys are active and right now i hate to admit it the mavs are ahead of us. yeah we are straight up the mavs are ahead of i us. mean that they are they are that you 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 there's no denying that they they really are but they also have Kyrie. Okay, so that's you know, what I'm saying. They made just, yeah, let's, just, let's think about that for a sec, right? Kyrie is Trey probably, has never had anything I mean, like a Kyrie. Never not at all. 
not at all. And I, I'm gonna be honest. And my dad is probably about to roll in his grave. Or no, my brother has his ashes. So he's wherever he is, he's about to be pissed because I'm about to piss him off. Kyrie, I'm sorry. Kyrie is the greatest dribbler I've ever seen in my life. The greatest. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hands down. I, I, and I will take that Pepsi. Yeah, you know, my dad is probably pissed off right now. Did you see Dr. J? And then, then I, I know he's cussing me out right now, but whatever, Dad. Um, you can't, no. you can't dribble no, let me tell you like something. something. Kyrie, and I will I, I I will remember this for the rest of my life because it happened against my hawks. Okay. Kyrie is on a fast break. I don't know if you guys remember this. He's on a fa- I don't know why he did it. But he just did it. He's on a fast break. He dribbles the ball right hand through his legs, back to right hand, not left. Goes up, saw that. under, layup, and the crowd is like, what the hell just happened? Now, he was. this is in between two or three guys. And I yep. guess if he does it right to left, there's a possibility got, of it being taken. Mm-hmm. But he went right hand. Bounce to right hand. I've never seen anybody do that. I, I wish we could show it so you could just see. But I bring it up to say Kyrie is probably the greatest dribbler I've ever seen in my lifetime. I didn't see Oscar Robinson play. I, I will give you that. There's some guys I didn't see play. But I'm going to go on record and say he's the greatest dribbler of all time. You can't stop yeah, him no. going to the basket. You can't stop that shot. And the Mavericks went out and got that. And you know what? What you know? We're kind of hawking. You know what I mean? If if there's one thing we hawks do, we you know yeah. we, we could have got Kyrie. You know what I mean? So at a certain point, the onus he was out there, right? At a certain point, the onus is on us. We have to start attracting players that are going to make a difference to come here. We got to do that. But honestly, let's keep it real. Kyrie and Trey Young together? I don't know. I get it. No, I, (laughs) yeah, yeah, because, yeah, and you're right. But we got to figure out something. Now, guys, here's my, here's a question for you. And if it's ridiculous, you can say it. It probably is. But what would you think about a trade of – would you be willing to trade the first-round pick and maybe Capella for, like, a really good package of maybe a combination of two players? So Brandon Ingram yeah. and insert whoever, and they come back to the Hawks. So now you'd have Trey, DeJounte, Brandon, Jalen Johnson, and Anyeka Anwu. Like what are your what what are your thoughts on that? Is that like just out there in the clouds, or is that I mean, something I, you guys I would, would even consider? I mean, I really don't want to trade the first round pick unless you get in the hall. That's my whole okay. thing. Like that's the only right. way I trade. I think they should do their due diligence, and no stone should be left unturned. But I also feel like if you're not if you're not winning the trade, like. You know, it's yeah. got to be obvious that you won the trade for me in right. order to trade it. Because if not, we need a big man. So we regardless, do. if you do trade, make sure you're winning so you can still get a big man. Whether if it's Sar, Cleegan, whoever, it's got to be a big man. We got to start there because the big man is starting to come back. So we need one. And we need somebody that can play with Trey, someone that can elevate the defense. Someone that can help out on the defense. A lot of guys, you know, make them start making uh, business decisions if they do get by Trey or anybody else because Trey is not the only yeah. person that gets blown by on defense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, right. or by anybody, but somebody who's going to protect the paint and also have other guys that when the big man comes over to protect the paint, somebody rotates to the next man who's going to be open to receive the yeah. pass when it gets dumped off. Yeah. So you know it's, it's IQ that we need too. <laughs> you know, so it's it's a it's a uh, it's a combination of a lot of different things, guys. But we're about mm-hmm. to wrap this thing up. So we've talked on on each GM. We've touched mm-hmm. on them. We've heard their problems. Now I just got to know. Out of I, you, only have to choose one GM out of these three GMs: Alex Anthopoulos, Terry Fontenot, and Landry Fields. Which GM problem would you rather have? 
Uh, I, you know what? Well, it's it's, def, it's definitely not Landry. I, let's let's get right. that out of the way. It's definitely not Landry because that's that's you know Man. that's a challenge. Um, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm, not, <laughs> bad I'm, I'm not touching Landry. that. I'm not touching that with a tip football. I mean, you know, the Falcons are looking up, and they, you know, they're gonna have a little bit of money next year. But I ultimately, I got to trust in Alex Anthopoulos. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to go Braves because, because I trust Alex. I trust Alex. I trust his organization. I trust him to do the right thing. I'm going to go down with Alex. That's just me. Smitty, that's, what that's say you, sir? Uh, I'm going to go Terry Fontenot. And the reason okay. why is, like I said earlier, he don't fall through hell and high water to get this roster, yeah. to get this uh, salary cap under control. And like I said, sometimes when you have a salary cap here like that, most GMs don't make it to the next contract. And I think if he win, has a winning record this year, I think he gets extended mm-hmm. again. So um, mm-hmm. I would have to put my trust in that because if I'm a GM and I come through that and then he places everything on my shoulder and I can pick it up and lift it uh, with the right head coach and the right roster, Taking it every day of the week, twice on Sundays. So I had to go tear front. No, it's because of what he's done. Right, right, right. Man, oh man, oh man. So I guess what now is my job to make a case for Landry Fields or something? My God, y'all. That's on you. That's on you. That's on you. Uh, Let's see what I. But but I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. When you jump, when you jump off that bridge, I'm gonna just 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 watch it. Hey, hey, I'm I'm gonna be like, I told you not to go to that ledge, but you took your ass to the ledge anyway. So if you jump, that's on you. Man, it's it's tough down there, man. Um, Uh, oh, that's tough. Gosh, mm. Landry, Godspeed, Mm -hmm. Landry. Oh, but I will say, (laughs) if you got a budget, if you got a budget cord, you will survive. If you got a budget cord, you will survive. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna need that bungee cord. Tight, tight, really tight. Really tight. Really tight. Really tight. For the Atlanta tight. Hawks, really tight man. on your ankle. Man, mm. I don't know. That thing may go mm. around the waist. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> 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 Bring me right back up. Hey, for real, for real. I don't know waste no time. Oh, oh man. man. So for the Atlanta Hawks, Landry Fields. Um, of course, you do have the, the the thing. You do have a little bit of leverage with the first round pick. Now, as far as that salary cap thing goes, that's going to have to be a conversation you have with, with ownership and trying to figure out, mm-hmm. are you going to be a second apron team or not? Are you going to spend mm-hmm. some money to possibly try to get a championship down here or not? Because you don't have any draft picks going forward. You're hoping that the Kings don't make the playoffs or, or they do make the playoffs next year or something like that. I, I, I always forget how which way it goes. But um, you hoping that they? I believe that they do make the playoffs, so you get the draft pick, or you mm-hmm. lost Kevin, or you basically traded Kevin Herter for nothing. So that's mm-hmm. another thing that you have to uh, think about. You have to make moves in this offseason. Your moves outside the draft may be more important than your actual moves at the draft. You should be wide open for business, no matter what. You have that first round pick, yes, Sar, but we're not championship with just Sar. So, Mm -hmm. that being said, I'm going back to at least trying to get a big man. We've already been linked to Klingon. You may may get him. And and that's not a bad big Jr. He's not SAR. He's not SAR. But he's definitely not John Conkac Jr. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, you just hurt my heart when you said that. The same way Smitty felt about about Drake May. The same oh. way Smitty felt about Drake May is how I feel mm. about Cleveland. God, He's saying man. Drake May is not going to be another Mitchell Trubisky. I beg to differ, but Bro, we'll see like what happens when we get said, there. I feel <laughs> and like now you just said about just so say, man. Jeez, and golly. Then, then now he he's calling us oh, oh, like, oh, 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 Clinton, just oh, I hope you hear that. Just let him put a chip oh, on your shoulder. Oh, oh, if you don't know who John Conkak is, you need to go back and watch it. It'll just make the you the worst you know, contract ever in Hawks history. Oh my gosh, the worst. 
This man like said, he still man, like he still got to put his head down when he walk around in Atlanta. Smitty, Smitty, <laughs> yeah, Smitty, I love he's seven foot, so un- that's hard un- to do. Un- unnecessary yeah. roughness, unnecessary roughness on Smitty. Fifteen yard nah, penalty. No, no, no. You, I'm you a, don't want to. Yeah, you I'm don't want to call that man yeah. like that. I'm a, I'm a one better you right there, Terry. <laughs> Personal foul. <laughs> Smitty, I fist. <laughs> uh, you wrong for that, man. That, that, that thirty yard that's... penalty. Boy, that's first down. Uh 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 uh. That's rough, man. That is, that player is has been disqualified from the game. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you gotta go to showers for that one, man. I'm sorry, you gotta go, man. From the game. That man yes, said man. John Conkak. If you guys don't know who John Conkak is, Google him. Good. Google him. His career was That's like right. three points. They he was it. terrible. Chris, you, you got you got to cut that point out and make a clip out. <laughs> hey man, it mattered. Oh, it mattered. Man, listen, that, that, that's crazy. John, John remember Conkett. it's oh, a part. It's a part back where Chip Hearn had a call when they played the Lakers and how it, they were clowning John Conkett because he ended up shooting a three. And it was like shot gone cat for three. You know, what was he doing? And he's oh my god, what is this? <laughs> bro? Bruh, this man bro. was straight comedy, and it wasn't nothing funny about it. Bro, nothing. bro. The only the only oh. Falcon that you just made me think about, Smitty, is Andre Bruce. Y'all remember Andre Bruce? Chris, you might be a little too young. Smitty, I know I you know. Hey, 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 I, do know I, I remember Andre, but I'm gonna come to the defense of Andre because Jamal Anderson took that away from him. Uh, right, the line, the, the, the pass rusher, the pass rusher, right. Jamal. You're I, right. I know right. Andre was You're the right. number one pick in the draft. Yeah. But Jamal Ellison hadn't done nothing at Arkansas to That's make true. him the number seven pick for the Falcons. That was just utter dysfunction. I That's don't true. know what they saw. Maybe you know they, they took out lunch no, and he uh, said some. Uh, they married one of their daughters or some someone, right? <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, bro. Um, that man had to have some pictures on the on the ownership or something. <laughs> doing something that he wasn't supposed to do. Because I, I I still to this day don't know. I got I got I got, I got to keep it PG. Him and I still but, don't uh, get it. I got I got to keep it PG and I can do it this way. Maybe they went to Magic City and they still one of the owners back there for the new era captain. And that's that's about as easy as I'm gonna put it. Oh boy! Oh wow! All right, guys. That's, that's, that's all right. But overall, though, y'all. Overall, that's though, right. Landry Fields. We can agree that he has the 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 worst uphill battle that we can see in quite some Agreed. time. And then to go along with it, we're not the best front office, not the best ownership at all. So you have a lot stacked against you. And I honestly believe that you know they brought in Landry because it was easy. You know, and now they see that it's not so easy. So moving forward, man, you, you're not necessarily going to turn the franchise around with one pick, but you can start getting the pick, making the right moves for the organization to at least start to try to climb out of this hole that you're falling in. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, Because if not, Landry, you and ownership are going to get buried by the fans, mm-hmm. by the city, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. – our basketball team is going nowhere, and you don't want to keep wasting guys. Again, like I said before, mm-hmm. like Trey Young, like Jalen mm-hmm. Johnson, DeJounte Murray, if you keep them, you know, saying Trey Young, if you keep him. But you don't want to keep wasting those guys, man, because they're mm-hmm. young, but they're still getting older, and they're playing basketball consistently. I'm going to stick the nail in the coffin. I'm going to stick the nail in the coffin. Here you go. They didn't do him no favor. They didn't do him no favors by adding Kyle Corbin as his assistant. Take that out nah, mm. I mean, no, nah, I feel like Kyle should be helping with the shooting. But you know, I mean, not saying that he's not, but you know, it's just we'll see, man. We'll see what happens with mm. that. You know, Cal being a part of the organization. It, it, you know, I just feel like we have haven't made it. Just not as assistant GM. I think he could have been better as a yeah. consultant or some had to do with uh, operations. But uh, as far as assistant yeah, I, GM, I don't. Yeah, I don't like no it. I, I don't like it is what it is. You know, that's why they get paid the big bucks to to figure this out. And I'm so mm-hmm. happy that the magnifying glass 
is on Atlanta because now you have but, but, to do but, you have to make these some uh, also moves. I'm starting to see a little bit of the dysfunction that Landry Fields had in New York with the Knicks. I'm starting to see a little bit of that in Atlanta with the Hawks. So just keep an eye on that. If this Good draft point. goes sideways, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind the way he did in New York. Just keep that in mind. Guys, hey, let me let me ask you a question right quick. So okay. and and I, I, I agree. We have to get this right. Because right. if we don't, I and I think this is for all Atlanta teams. If we don't, it furthers the narrative that Atlanta teams just can't cut cut it. And that is a narrative that unfortunately has been attributed to the Falcons, the Hawks, and the Braves before their recent run of success in 95 and, and 2021. It's it's not just about the Hawks. It's for our city. If we botch this, if we botch this, it just furthers the narrative, right? We already know yeah. the narratives with the Falcons and why you drafted Penning. Said, ah, da, da, I'm not going to go down the road. But it's out there. And I, I think for that reason, it's imperative. It's imperative that we get this 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 pick right, you know? And if it's SAR, then fine. Let's get SAR. Let's get started. Let's make a move for today, but also one for tomorrow because we have to start building. To Chris's point, Trey is not going to sit here for another three years. If he's just not. Nah, he's just, he's, and he's, honestly, he's you, just can't, not. you can't ask to. You can't. You can't ask nobody to. And, and, nobody. And, and to, add, to add to your point, and I'm glad you said that because I had this on my mind I was going to do it on the short. But now I can let it out. Um one thing about it, you talk about the future, you got to build from the future years ahead. And what yes. I mean by that, yes, look at George Steinbrenner, and God rest his soul, New York Yankees yes. owner. Yes, he yes. had a blueprint in place, and they still follow that blueprint to this day. What do they do every single year? Go out and get the best players available on the market, no matter how much it costs. Look at what mm -hmm. they did with Aaron Judge, brought in Juan Soto this year. Um, you look at uh, um, what's the other on the Stanton still got right. Stanton too, don't you? right? Yeah, so and you look at the Dallas Mavericks with Mark Cuban, like you said, they went out and made move that championship caliber player. So, what's mm -hmm. the similarities in all of these teams? The owner, the owner knows mm -hmm. how to go out and get what he needs, not only for now but for the future. Yes. It's about plan C's. Look at the well, Pittsburgh Steelers, they've only had three coaches in the last 40 years. And mm -hmm. guess what? They right. got the same blueprint in place from all the way from the front office all the way down to the 3 4 defense they've been running since the 60s. That's true. So it's that all about consistency point. and putting all down a blueprint and following that blueprint to a T. Just that yep. simple. All about that blueprint, baby. Mm -hmm. Gotta have them mm -hmm. plans. Gotta have that. You can, because you can always have more with the vision as long as you have that vision. That's true. Yep, Tell us this. Has been excellent. This was not supposed to be uh this long, but talking with you, great guys, man. We sharing, throwing around ideas, man. This has went over an hour, and um, hopefully, if uh, if anybody made it all the way through, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys will come back and you know send um share more I time. Had a bucket on the side because y'all know I'm gonna say something ignorant. Yeah, man. Come on, man. You know we're gonna have fun as we do all the time, man. So before we get up out of here, man, T. Will and Smitty, man, let everybody know where they can find you guys. Yes, sir. Well, first and foremost, gentlemen, thank you for having me. Thank you for just allowing me to grace the stage with greatness here. I am humbled. I am appreciative. And I'm also available the next time you need it. Just throwing that out there. But I am first and foremost a member of the One Time for the Fan podcast, which airs a Sunday night at 8 p.m., Wednesday night at 8 p.m., Friday morning at 9 a.m., and I've just started my own podcast, which you can find me at Terry Wilson for my ATL Sports 1 on YouTube, and the ATL in that is capitalized, again, at Terry Wilson for the number four, my ATL Sports 1 on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. I'm there Monday through Friday, typically between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. And that's where I am. Gentlemen, hey, thank you. Smitty, I stuff. defer to you. And thank you for having me, by the way. Smitty, go ahead. Hey, Y'all know where to find me, man. Smitty Sports Machine on YouTube, 
on Twitter at FatBoySlam underscore 21. And you can catch me and my compadres, uh, Bird on Mr. 95 North, and my boy Chris A1 Forever every Tuesday night, uh, 8 p.m. And during the football season, we on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock to do the preview shows and Sundays after the game to do the post game. So trust me, y'all going to want to catch those post games and those preview shows because we're going to always have special guests coming through. And uh, speaking of special guests, I got to throw this out there right quick. Tuesday, June 11, 8 o'clock. Please catch us, man. We're going to be talking to the one and only Steve Walsh from the NFL Network, man. And he's going to wow. come and talk about football with us. Wow. And we're going to have a good time, y'all. So y'all stay tuned to that. Good old time. Wow. Good old time. That's Amen. what I'm talking about, man. Amen. Making Amen. moves, man. 2024 growing season, man. It's A1 Forever Sports on YouTube. The show that's cool and fly too. We be generational because it's always time to be, and you can always have more with the vision, you know. So don't no point of settling for less, right? Right. Amen. So right. right the way it goes, man. Um, just like Smitty said, Steve Weish on uh next this coming Tuesday, but we also have another announcement as the voice of the Atlanta Hawks, Steve Holman, someone who's been with the organization longer than even Love Bob Rapper. Yes. will be joining us on Monday around 4 p.m. So it's going to be in the afternoon uh, time, but he's going to come through, show, uh, share some insight, give some thoughts about the Atlanta Hawks. I can't wait to have him on for that. So, again, growing season. You guys get ready because we got uh, content coming to you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at A1 Forever, Instagram A1 Forever, and, of course, uh, TikTok, the real A1 Forever. Making moves in 2024, man, and beyond, guys. So y'all just stick tuned. And until next time, guys, peace and blessings to each and every one of you guys. And like our brother Berto would say, um, we're going to give you your Thursday back. <laughs> you know? And, uh, <laughs> and you, hey, man. Yeah, hey, I like that little saying, man. Salute my brother Berto, <laughs> man. But um, Berto again, Thomas. Peace, into, peace and blessings to each and every last one of you guys. And until next time. For Terry, for Smitty, and for A1 Forever Sports, we will holler.